Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mount Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video discusses the assumptions coded into StatCrunch and how we can get around those to perform nonlinear regression quickly and accurately. So, whoever it was that built the code for StatCrunch built some assumptions into their product. Okay. First, they're assuming that when you're using StatCrunch, you're only going to want one model when performing any type of regression on a data set. And this is why there's no automated comparison feature inside StatCrunch. I mentioned previously in a previous mini lecture how in the real world, when I was making models as part of my day job, you know, we use software that would make multiple models and then list everything out in a table and then we could choose which model we wanted to actually use for our particular application. StackCrunch is assuming that you're not going to be doing any of that. So you're only going to want one model. Well, as you've seen in the previous mini lectures, <laughs> there's going to be times when you're going to want to make more than one model at once. So it would be very helpful if they had that feature, but they don't. The second assumption they make is that you know exactly what model you want to make. Not only do you want one model, but you know exactly what the one model is. So the assignment problems that you have are actually presented under a different assumption. The assignment, okay, because so your textbook author actually assumes that you're going to be making multiple models and comparing them out. And so he wrote the problems with that assumption in mind. Well, StackCrunch has no automated model comparison features. So Again, you've got to make each of these models one at a time. It also assumes that your needs for nonlinear regression will be few and far between. Okay, so that's why you don't have separate options inside StackCrunch for making exponential models or power models or logarithmic models or, you know, whatever, because, you know, they assume that you won't need this very often. So, they, they include this functionality in StackCrunch, but to access the functionality, you've got to do a data transformation inside the options window inside StackCrunch. So, you know, and they thought that would be sufficient because, hey, you're not going to need it that much. Well, overall, looking at the whole semester, yeah, you're not going to need it that much. But when you're working the problems in this one particular section, you're going to need it again and again and again and again. So if you don't make the right transformations on your data, you're not going to get the right coefficients for your model, and therefore you're not going to get the problem right. Is there a simple way that we can handle nonlinear regression in StackCrunch? And the answer is yes. We can get around the assumptions that have been played out here. Here's how we're going to do it. We can't change the assumptions that are built into a tool, but we can change our approach to conform with those assumptions. So if we could read a problem statement and know precisely what model to make, we could easily handle the first two assumptions we just covered. And that's going to be easily handled with the table that we talked about. So, you know, we could actually make each of the models individually, but what are we going to learn out of that? I mean, seriously, I mean, this course is not intended to make expert model makers. We're just giving you a taste of nonlinear regression so you can be somewhat familiar with it. But we're not expecting anyone who completes this course to be like, you know, experts in it, the where you're going to have to do it as part of your day job. That's not the intention here. So you're not really going to learn that much. You know, you're not going to achieve much from the objectives of the course from having to make each model individually. So that's where that table I mentioned before is going to come in. We showed a table of practical examples there in the previous mini lecture where it's all listed out for you. So you just figure out what's the problem about, look it up in the table, and it tells you what model you need to make. To handle the third assumption, we're going to need a simplified ways to use those nonlinear capabilities in StackCrunch without excess complication. So we're going to have to basically construct another table to help us with that. And I've already done that work for you, okay? So this table will tell you what options to select in StackCrunch and what to do with the results. 
Okay, and you know, once I, once I show you how to use the table, you'll see how it guides you through each step of the process for using StatCrunch to do nonlinear regression. So this is the data transformations table that we're going to be using. So there's two tables. The first is the one we've already seen, which shows us the different practical examples for each of the generic model types. Once we know what model we need to make, then this helps us to identify how to make the model and how to interpret the results that we get in the results window. So this is what we're calling our data transformations table. Okay, keep in mind that LN is mathematical shorthand for the natural logarithm, okay, as opposed to the base 10 logarithm. This is actually have a base for, you know, the natural logarithm base, which is uh, the letter E or 2.718 one it just goes on the decimal there goes on for ever and ever uh, but that's usually coded into most calculators there and you know it's uh, not too hard to learn how to use that functionality in your calculator so when you have a linear quadratic and logarithmic models you just take the coefficients as they appear in your parameters table but if you're using an exponential and a power model you're going to have to adjust those numbers you get in the results window a little bit to get the right answers for your assignments. So let's consider first the case of the exponential model. Here's the general form for the exponential model. y equals a b to the x. If we take the natural logarithm of both sides, then the left side of our equation stays the same, but the right side we can split up there's a property of logarithms that says if you take the log of a product, then that's the same of taking the log of each separate part of that product and adding them together. So we can split this up like this. And then there's another property of logarithms that says if you've got an exponent there of the number you're taking a logarithm of, you can just move that out to the front of the logarithm. So it's the same as being multiplied by that exponent. It, it gives you the same number. And so if we compare this with our standard form for the linear model, we can see that this equation has a similar form. Okay, The natural log of a is similar to the intercept that we saw from the linear model. And the natural log of b, you know, so, yeah, okay, so I'm jumping ahead here. So, so b0 is going to be equal to the natural log of a because they're in the similar position. So we just set them equal to each other. Okay, that means that our intercept value in our, in our model table is going to be the same as the natural log of a. We, raise both, we take both sides to the base e, and then we can solve for a. So then to get that first part to put in our, our answer field, we're going to have to take e, raise it to the intercept power. Okay, so the table actually tells you to do that. Natural log of b is similar to b1, and we can run through a similar mathematical derivation for that. We can look at the power equation. There's our general form, and we can run the same process through with our power equation. Compare it with the general form for the linear model, and we see that again, A is just going to be e raised to the intercept power. And then B, of course, is going to be similar to B1. So then we just set those two equal. And then that's that's the number that we're actually going to use for B. We're actually putting in the slope. So this is how we basically get around the assumptions that are built into StackCrunch. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at aspiremountainacademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.